building a business is not just building a business online, it's building a business IRL. So quick intro on Don. Don's Don's based here in Miami. Don's the owner of 1% Gallery, clothier of celebrities, b- basketball players, athletes, whatever. What, what I guess what now I'm saying is just the king of the drip at this point, right? <laughs> yeah, nah, some people, you know, plug in the drip, king of the drip. Where do you start? Um, as far as like what you wear, I mean, it's just an expression of yourself. So if you're a guy that's like, yo, I'm a New York type of guy, you might wear your classic streetwear, you know, garments, a hoodie, maybe like a little jacket, kind of like a bomber jacket, like what I came in with. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just certain staples. So like you kind of like slowly work your way through it. But, you know, for anyone that's just kind of starting out, I always, from a consultative uh, perspective, kind of just go in and say, look, what do you do? Where are you? Who are you around? Mm-hmm. Those types of things will kind of give me an idea of like the types of garments that you might want to be in. Now, if you're just like, hey, look, those three things important, but has nothing to do with what I can wear, then we can kind of get creative. But if you tell me like, hey, look, bro, I'm 35. I'm in Wall Street. I'm on Wall Street. I'm in investment banking, PE, whatever that number, whatever that is. And these are the types of guys I'm around. These are the types of guys I'm trying to impress or whatever. We can put you in like some like maybe what you're wearing. If not, maybe some John Elliott jeans, some, uh, you know, like, I don't know, some Dior sneakers, low cut, not too much. Like you can slowly sort of bring in certain brands that are kind of be more social, but at the same time, like not complete streetwear. Right. What's cool here is like you're you're talking about it like it's a reflection of you and maybe it's a reflection of who you who you want to be hanging out with. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like it's it's you're reflecting the future you now a little bit. Absolutely. You're in your little time machine saying, all right, who do I want to hang out with? What do these, what do these guys and and gals wear or whatever? What do they look like? What are they talking about? What are they wearing? Like what's cool? So you kind of are, you're catapulting yourself visually to where you want to be based on what you purchase, what you invest in as far as garments. And then when you're in those social settings, you're just it's just natural people pick up on it like yo bro i like your shoes y'all like your shirt because those are the types of things that either one they're wearing they like as well and now you've been created you've created some social equity for yourself it's fashion not in a materialistic sense but in like a community sense it's like investing in it's almost (laughs) investing in relationships through yeah you know it's why it's funny like so i have the the, like this term it's like you see it and like you know and and you know a lot of guys like this this type of conversation is rare like you know there's the design district in miami there's a garment district in LA, there's Soho in New York, and everyone's buying stuff for social equity, Mm -hmm. but no one talks about it. Mm. It's like, so, you know, why do you, why do you wear what you wear? And like, how does that relate to your surroundings? Right. So that's, that's why I think, you know, some of this, what we're talking about is like super cool and important. The reason, like the reason I was really interested in this conversation is because when I think about, you know, when I think about material stuff, like certain types of brands, certain types of bags, whatever watches, it's like, there's a point where it just gets into stupid territory where, where it becomes the flex culture. And I don't like the flex culture. My whole social media platform is kind of dedicated to saying, you know, that really doesn't work. And it, that, that doesn't really achieve anything. But when when we talk about this stuff, almost like tools, yeah. tools for like sitting around a bonfire, not tools for flexing on someone else and making you making you feel be- like the man and this person yeah. like shit. Then I'm then I'm listening. And so this is this is kind of how I was thinking about what I would put on. You know, we you know, I get DMs all the time. Hey, man, what do I wear to the interview? What kind of watch do I wear? Yeah. You know, I, I oftentimes hear I hear like young I hear the young guns that are like, yo, I've got this Rolex and it's my first job. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> don't make it about that. Don't make it about that. You're to, you're there to learn. You're not there to impress. Right, right, right. What we're talking about here, it's basically showing up to be more you as opposed to showing up and being more like appearing more a certain way. Exactly. And like for me, like I'm authentic, like I'm all about like originality. So it don't matter if you got on like crazy brands that everyone knows, Gucci, Louis, whatever. Like no one cares about that. It's about like how you like put your shit together and like how you feeling if you're confident you like yo if you walk out and you're like bro like i got on this big ass yellow fur jacket like mm-hmm. like why do you got that shit on it, right. it could be like yo like a, not something that's you like yo like i would wear that it may not be a thing for you but you're like yo buddy look good in it like i mean we saw old hip-hop references cameron was coming through and the pink lamp i mean the pink uh range rover right. pink jacket on like that was like weird at the time but at the same time it was like you got it's that kind shit, of, you got that shit awesome. on. Like, and now it like it transcends into like so many different things. So, 
you know, and then when you really kind of study like streetwear, you know it, like it's a thing. Like if you look at streetwear in different regions of the world, uh -huh. it's different. You look at Tokyo, you look at Japan, you look over in India, you look over here, you look in LA versus Miami or New York, it's just different. The stuff that like the designers make, they send different colorways, different cuts to different regions okay. because they just know like if it's freezing cold here, right. don't send them a fucking a Rick Owens t-shirt, like a little like slim type of thing. Right. Send them like a jacket. D define streetwear for me. I mean, because oh, oh, look, as yeah. a, you know, streetwear is like, you know, it, it, most of us, I mean, some of us, maybe not so much, but most of us grew up in cities where there's people, um, people, there's processes, there's trains, there's, there's a lot of like, I guess, silver line signals mm -hmm. that are happening in your exterior environment. So your garment should reflect that in a weird way. I don't, I don't know how to like, sometimes they put it together, but if you're somewhere where you gotta be a little more tactical, dude, wear some tactical drip. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like me, I, I'm like, me and my boy Hugo, we got this thing where like, we're all Japanese jujitsus, we're Jedis. Mm -hmm. So like the shit we wear is like, I wear, like the sweater I had on was like a, a, a Hivers season seven, 20, 2017 Vetmont, just sweater, it's just heavy. But it, like it, it has great cuts. It doesn't look like anything special. Mm -hmm. That shit's probably like twelve hundred dollars, you know, right. some type of shit. But like, I could have just got a black Hanes sweater. Right. But like, when you see the cuts, like people notice, like something's not the same about that as anything normal. Right. These uh, Fear of God Japanese Jiu-Jitsu pants. Shout out to Jerry Lorenzo. He's a goat in the game up there with, with, uh, with you know, uh, Fear of God, right? Yeah, Fear of God. Right. I mean, I, I don't wear essentials, no no cap to him, just only. Okay, because I was like, maybe I should get some essentials before no, I roll into see, this. No, that's the thing. Like, so essentials, and then you have like real FOG. So it's Fear of God, Fear of God essentials. The essentials is kind of like that hybrid line for right. him to kind of like meet the max, meet the masses. The stuff that I wear is typically a little more exclusive and a little That's more. That's why I like es more, essentials. I'm like, is all like, right, sweet. Right. These prices look pretty good. I feel like I'm yeah, getting I a mean, deal. Like, so like, you can get a pair of like essential sweats for like maybe like seventy bucks. That's, a hoodie. See, yeah, I'm like, listening to this right. I'm like, yeah, know, that, that feels that, good. That, and that's like normal. I mean, look, you know, like I was saying, like, like spending ridiculous money on shit isn't like what I'm promoting. I'm like, just feeling comfortable and knowing that you have stuff that you like. I'm big on like things that people don't typically have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's also part of my job. My job is to like be almost a, uh, you know, a, a billboard for the guys that I want to work with, the mm -hmm. guys that may want to work with me. So when they see me and then like, yo, buddy got that shit on, it's like encouraging them to want to work with me. Right. If I got the same shit on that everyone has on, Right. There's no real reason for them to come work with me. So when you say billboard, you're you're a living example of what they could be, what they could if be. they work with you. If they were like, yo, I want super archival shit. I want one of one drip vintage right. pieces that no one has. Like, well, you got, I got it on. You got to holler at your boy. Right. <laughs> so you know, it's not a fake it till you make it thing. It's hey, if this is the business you want to be in, you got to go all in. Yeah. You got to embody it. You got to I mean, live like it. It's like a, being a jeweler. If you like, if you if you want to <laughs> see if you want big jewelry, you go to the jewelry store. The guy, I mean, I'm not saying usually jewelry store guys don't have any jewelry on. And no. Way, but, but the watch guys but they, but they are have, decked they have, out. They'll have on a nice watch. That yeah. You're like, holy shit. Like, yeah. So my boy, Nico uh, Vanderhorst, I think he's in Miami right now. I'm FaceTime with him earlier. He's in probably the number one watch influencer in okay. the world. Uh, that guy always has something. Even when he's FaceTime me, he scratches his head. I'm like, what, what dude, yeah. what is that? Like, that yo, is savage <laughs> piece that you have on. So, and, and you see like the guys in tracks NYC, he's got, he's got the chains on yeah. cause he sells a lot of chain. It's like, dude, be, become your customer, yeah, become your customer, be your business. And you know, and I mean like me, bro, I, I could flip drip to anybody. It doesn't matter. Like I could look, you make you look fly. However you want to look, I can make sure that you're curated, but at the end of the day, for me, it's about relationships. That's why I say, like, you know what I was saying before, a lot of it is more about, like, the intrinsic values that you can create from that because there's no price tag on relationships. When, mm -hmm. you, when you build really cool relationships, it's like now you go from I got him one shirt or I got him a whole outfit to, bro, now I'm at his crib. I'm designing his crib. And right. now we chill all the time. We do all this all the time because right. you become a part of their entourage. Like, my man JC, Jordan Clarkson, super cool dude. He plays for the Jazz. Like, I love JC because he rolls with his entourage. Like Jay, I mean JC, he like he literally he's got Steve the tattoo guy. So like he's the, Steve does all the tattoos for everybody in the NBA. Okay, but like when he goes out in places, he goes to live. He goes to these places. He brings his crew. Right, his barber's there. So like 
Everybody like, who's in his ecosystem is, is in his there. ecosystem. Right. So like a lot of times, like even me last night, I'm out last night at 11, I mean 11 with Fred. Really? Uh, yeah, with uh, Rick Ross and the gang. It was, it was a movie. Rick bro. Ross was there. It was a fucking movie. So thanks. <laughs> just <laughs> thanks for the invite, number yeah, one. Uh, no, I know. I was, was in bed by 9.30 just in case my audience is curious I think what I, I was doing. I think I was night. more like a 6.15 this morning. Jesus. But But it's like. And you made the bell here. Hey man, look, anything I gotta do, work is work, <laughs> is work. but but it was just cool because you're like, you know, you see these guys and you see their entourage and look, I don't know everybody in the camp, but I know the people that are bringing the values and the rest of them, you know, being a body sometimes is valued because it's a familiar face. But you know, when you're a part of, you know, uh, multiple teams where you're like, hey, look, I'm the guy that helps them get these garments. I'm not their stylist all the time. Their stylist might be present, but you know, you're a cool guy and you bring something to the table, like they want you around. So that's yeah. the relationship I'm trying to build with. You like bring that. value to the table. That's, you got to bring value to any table, man. Or, or you're not going to sit at the fucking table, period. Uh, period. Yeah. This is, this is the same thing. Like when we're talking about finding a mentor, you know, going to get a new job, whatever it is, whatever you want to do, you have to turn up with extra over the top 3X, 4X, 5X value. And by the way, all of a sudden that chair just just yep. pulls away and that's your seat and you get to sit down for a little bit and hang out with everybody I remember, show up with the value i remember this one time i'll tell you a quick story i was in college i went to school in rhode island and i was like i had a mentor in boston big commercial real estate guy he calls me and he's like bro can you be in my office tomorrow at like 8 a.m i'm like well 8 a.m like dude i have like a i think i have like a 9 45 you know econ class mm -hmm. but like we'll see so like i get up early as fuck you know i drive all the way down to boston um, dude, I remember, like, I just remember getting there and I met with this dude for 15 minutes. Like I drove all the way to Boston for 15 minutes, park. I got a parking ticket. I got everything. Like, and I was like, he told me some like super important shit, you know, that I needed to know. But at the end he was like, uh, okay. I think you have enough time to get back and go to your econ class. And right. I know you're a professor, so I'll know if you don't go to class or not. So I get back to class. I mean, I get back to campus. I'm like, fuck this. I'm not going to class. <laughs> but then I went, I was like, you know what? Like I can't have done all of that and then get half back and, it. half ass it. And the guy tell me, but then once I went to class and Mr. Plumbo told me, it was like, you know, God rest his soul. He was like, he's like, Kevin called me and told me you probably wouldn't come to really? class today. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm here. And okay. I swear to God that opened so many doors and it, really? just, taught, it just taught me like, Sometimes you got to go the distance, bro. Like in all in, all in, you got to be all in, even when you're not ready, but you just got to do it because you, what's funny is everyone thinks nobody's looking and most of the, most of the time they're not, but when they are they and are. you, f and you fuck that up, oh, yeah. you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out. I, I could have easily not gone to that class and Kevin would have called me and be like, so you didn't go to class. And two, right. my, my professor would have known I didn't go to class, even though he knew I went to the meeting and I didn't know he went to the meeting. Right. But it's just like. Those things are like, I believe like for young people, entrepreneurs, business people, it's like, if you're not willing to go the distance and like really cultivate those relationships or whatever it takes to get to the next level, then you're just going to be stuck in like this complacent sort of spot and not yeah. wondering like why you didn't get that. The holding pattern the where, holding where pattern. most people live in the zoo, circling Wait. around, hoping something people, happens. People, place. Get, people get comfortable, man. Yeah, it's ugly. It's it's a it's a disease. We don't we don't do holding patterns. And like for, here. and like for me, for example, like so when I was in school, a lot of my friends were playing ball. Um, you know, they were at Q's, UConn, all these like top schools in Big East was fire. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them transitioned naturally into the NBA. And you know, for me, I was never like you know some people see these guys and they get like, oh my god, like you know LeBron James, like all right, yeah, LeBron is LeBron, but like. He's a hooper. He still right. puts his shoes on the same way. He's probably, I mean, no, just LeBron because we love LeBron, but right. like, he's not the most swaggiest in the league. Right. But like, so when you start to see certain things, like, all right, you respect them for just who they are. And I'm so comfortable being around these guys that it's not like shell shocking. But, you know, so that, that has to be part of the business. So when I'm going out and I'm seeing these guys in person, uh, me and them, I just let them know what's up with me, bro. I'm done. Plug on a drip, whatever is easy for you to right. digest. And if you want, I see you got that shit on a little bit. Right. Like, you know, I can help you. What you mean? Boom. Take my math and we'll go from there. Right. And it's just how it happens. Okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about this as a business, okay. right? Because for sure, like, I don't, like when I pop on social media, I talk about this stuff. I talk about the business that I know, yeah. right? So what that ends up doing, and unfortunately this is social media in general, mm -hmm. all you hear is commercial real estate, <laughs> trading, you hear fucking crypto. You hear all this Forex, like, all this, crazy yeah, all this shit, stupid, yeah. half of it is completely stupid shit that nobody should be doing, mm -hmm. right? Except a very select few and even they, their returns suck compared to the S&P 500. But it's like, that's not all there is out there. 
to make money, no, to bro. have a fulfilling life. So t- like, tell me, how did you like, I- I'm hearing you go from this econ class. Like how the hell did you even get started doing this thing that is now bro, your thing? It's so crazy. So in the shortest of it all, like I finished uh, Providence College in Rhode Island. Economics. You went to Providence College? I went to PC. I had a buddy who went to P- PC. Go Friars. This is, yeah, go Friars forever, man. There's a, there's a <laughs> lot of fire girls there, but like... Uh, <laughs> But no, so so for I mean, look, I met a shorty there. It was amazing. I fell out of a, I fell out of a bunk bed, uh, <laughs> and it was really high, and I hit the floor, and you know, at PC, the floor is the, just cement. The floor is cement. I hit the cement, yeah, and I'm still here. Hey, look, you good. know why? It's a it's a Catholic school. A Jesus good. was watching yeah, over me. In that. I was there. Yeah, was, you were there. <laughs> I was there for yeah. you. Thanks for taking care of me, bro. Anytime, brother. <laughs> but, but no, more more importantly, it's just like you know, when you're there, like you know, I, I saw this like opportunity, so I, I studied economics and art. I started our business, 1% Gallery. And originally, most people don't know this, but I had started this selling art because, like, I was in a lot of art classes. I was, like, dating this girl, um, you know, and, and you know, she told me that she was kind of into art. And then it was other girl that I knew that she was a painter. And, like, I was like, yo, like, you know, I want to try to figure out, like, how to help you. Right. I, I already had connections to go do what I needed to do next. But it was just something that I was like, well, let me figure out how to, like, help you. Okay. So she had told me, she was like, yo, God sent me here to paint. I was like, holy shit. Like, God either sent you here to be broke as fuck or, right. like, or like you're really going to be something. Right. So I went in my room that day. I, like, Googled, like, how to start a business, LLC, uh, uh, paid the 500 bucks, got a website, right. 125 bucks, domain, 30 bucks. Like, I just, just putting the pieces together. I put the pieces together. I signed her as the first artist, got a, con- you know, regular Rocket, whatever, you right. know, contract. Rocket lawyer. Rocket whatever. lawyer contracts and got a contract. That would be a great sponsor. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> and just got her. I got her to just, you know, she was like, yo, I believe in you and I believe what you're doing. And... It was a crazy. It was crazy. So my goal was to sell art in the beginning. I was just trying to like paintings, drawings, paintings, photography, de- like design, just anything where Visual there was, art, there was yeah. like emerging artists and creatives. So I had, you know, she gifted me this piece as I was graduating, right? And shit was fucking dope. And I just, you know, when I was moving back to my parents' crib, I had nowhere to put it. Right. My mom was like, "Where are you putting that thing?" So I had gifted it to my boy's dad that had got me a job. I was working for a company, Boston Properties, uh, big real estate, yeah. you know, re out across the world. So I was like, uh, you know, I was like, you know, right, like take this thing. Thank you for a job. Love is love. And he's like, wow, this is super dope. So he like puts one up in his office. One of his buddies comes in. The art is dope. Where'd you get it? He tells me like he tells him like Don did it. I was like, right. I didn't do it. The girl did it. But like I, I can get you I can get you one. one if you want one. He's like, I want it. Stroke me a check for like forty five hundred bucks. I gave the girl like twenty five, took two, put in the business and just. That's the first paycheck in first, the business. First paycheck. Yeah. And that's called product market fit for all the marketing and business nerds out there. When you don't even know why and someone's handing you money, that's when you hit gold, basically. But what was crazy was like I was still like so, you know, all through high school, all through college, I was very big on like how I wear, like what I wear, how I feel like that type of shit. Like art was kind of coming secondary, but it was still just like, well, I mean, I got to put it all together. So I had these guys going up to the NBA and I was like, bro, you guys got to buy some art for your cribs. And naturally, you know, they're making their first checks. They're like, yo, bro, I mean, that's just tight and all, but I'm not there yet. Right. And I, meanwhile, I'm buying like Peter Licks. I'm buying causes. I'm buying art that I could afford. Okay. And, uh, and then they would go to Saks, they would go to Barney's and, and just blow it back, 20, 30, 40,000. And you're like, seeing this happen. I'm seeing it happen. Like, you know, wait I mean, a sometimes, second. Sometimes they're like, yo, D, like, you want a shirt? I'm like, I want one in a shirt, but I'll take a shirt. So, <laughs> but, I, but then it just, it woke me up. I was like, wait a minute. Like, the same way you just dropped that bag on mm. clothes, you should drop it on art. Mm. And they were just buying stuff at Saks. It was generic stuff, little random girl running around, grabbing shit, making it quick. I was like, shh. She and then even, run in the card and throw it in the bag. And yo, then, she, okay. that's the whole throw it in the bag. Like she didn't even really like, like they, she didn't really like take time to get to know what buddy was doing, right. who he was. Like, and I was just like, you know what? Here I am. I know you better than these people. I know your sizes. I know what you want to get. Right. Don't do this shit anymore. Let me help you do it. Okay. And immediately they're like, well, if you think you can do a better job, D. So now I'm online. I'm on all these super cool websites and crazy shit. Right. I'm finding them stuff from overseas that they can't know. You're offering a deeper level of service that the person in Saks could never pull off. Because they can only pull from what their inventory is. Right. And I'm like, well. And they probably don't give a shit anyway. I mean, there's. And it's different. Like, so now you just have for departments where you have Saks, you know what I mean? With the Webster, with the, you know, uh, you know, addition of like the Webster and things like that. Not to pick on Saks. No, 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 no. I mean, I I got plenty of shit from Saks, but like, it's just like. They, at the time, you had Barney's, Saks, Nordstrom's, Bloomingdale. You had, like, mm. multiples. 
now you just kind of have sacks because they mm. bought Barney's and they bought some of those other ones. So mm-hmm. now you kind of have this one conglomerate. But before you had different ones. So like the girl in Saks could only show you what was mm. at Saks. I'm showing these guys what's in all these stores and online. And at that time, people didn't trust online as much. Right. I was one of the first adapters. But yo, look, this store looks fucking legit. I'll order something and, and I'll read the return policies and I'll make sure that if it's not right, I'm sending it back. Right. If it is right, pff, amazing. Right. And you take the risk. And I take the that. risk. So that was how I kind of started doing that. And I was just like, yo, guys, don't do not do this on your own. I'll help you out. And before you knew it, you had, you know, three, four guys trusting you and you're in the game. And then you're in business. You're in the, bu- you're in the business now. And so now that you've built, so, so number, I just love all these stories because like, nothing is planned out from the beginning. No, man. So you start in art, which, which is like, I like to call it just iterating your way to success. It's like, oh, art's kind of like clothes. Like art's kind of like fashion. It's like the next door neighbor, right? Mm-hmm. And then you jump over because you say, well, I see the bigger market opportunity over here, basically. Yeah. And I was still a little blinded too. Cause like, you know, I had other opportunities. I was working at this place, liquid art house, and I was curating art for a lot of like high end people. Um, you know, shout out to Ruta Laukeen. She had this amazing restaurant, like all the chefs, they were like, they were like artists, the, the art, the food was art. Mm. And she was like, Don, I'm going to help you. I need your help to like curate art in the space. We'll source stuff from all around the world. Every other month we'll have artists coming in. So I was doing that. I was making a couple of sales there, you know, 15, 20, 30,000 here and there. I was like, well, I mean, like, make that's some money. pretty good. I was like, I'm making money, but I had soon to learn that the splits were like, okay, well, that number's 20, but, you know, 15 of it is going to the artist, and mm-hmm. then five goes to the house, and then my check might be like 1,500 or like yeah. two stacks. I'm like, well, it's still good money when you're a young guy, but, you know, I want the, the bigger check. So yeah. that's the artist check. And that's when I just started realizing, like, I had to have better relationships that kind of cut the middle people out. And also I needed to be a maker of things. So that's kind of what helped me get into designing my own brand as well as buying other brands. Okay. How would it, how does social media factor into all this thing? You know, or, do, bro, or does it not, you know, compared to the other, it's, it's so, you know, that's, it's an amazing question. Cause for so many, it's so powerful. It can help you scale 10 X for sure. I just ran into some really tough challenges early on. Like I remember a time when like my link, my, like my domain would not even connect to my fucking Instagram. <laughs> this was years. I used to call no number. I'm fighting. I'm crying. I'm like, yo, like everyone's making money around me. I can't even connect my domain okay. for my brand right. to my Instagram. And I'm like, fuck it. I can't get stuck up or I can't get stuck on like bah, bah, on, on, on things that just are out of my control right mm. now. So you just go around it. You like, I removed not having all the money to seed my business and all forget about it. I, I forgot. I, I got rid of the whole social media. I just started literally, you know, fucking pounding, sand, like pounding concrete and right. pounding sand. I was like, you know, if I want to get in front of pounding the pavement, I think. yeah, yeah, yeah pounding I mean, the pavement. sand, pavement, whatever. I'd be on the beach. So we pounding be, the pavement. We be, I'd be on everything, but like, you know, <laughs> you know right. me, man. I'm right. We're in Miami. That's where the pounding sand, uh, pounding, yeah. Kick rocks, all right. that shit. Whatever. You were kicking something. <laughs> but you know, I just, I just, I was like, you know what, for what I'm trying to do is not a, uh, it wasn't like getting in front of like a million people. Mm. It was like, if I can get the right 10 people, you're good. I'm fucking good. Yeah. And I just started kind of like getting closer and getting closer. And, you know, part of that is you got to be strategic. So this is all like, I'm living in Boston. I had lived in Toronto for a little while. Like, I'm like, okay, when I was up in Toronto, I got super cool with a lot of XO guys, like the weekend, Nav, Roy mm. Woods. These, I'm running around the town, I'm seeing them. And Toronto's got a streetwear scene. Yeah, they do, but they really like they really fucked with my streetwear because they're like, bro, you like you from the states, like so. In in Canada is this thing where it's like you know you're either from Canada or you're from the United States. You could be from the shittiest town in the United States, but you're still from the states. So <laughs> girls will mess with you, right? But like you know you get this balance. You're like, especially if you're from New York, you're like, oh my god, you're from New York. Yeah, I wasn't from New York. I was from Boston. We're so gonna it, film in uh, Toronto next. It sounds yeah, like. I mean, the six side is fire, but like I was from Boston, so I would go. I'm at Pick Six. I'm at Frings. I'm at all these like Drake's restaurants, the places mm-hmm. that we'd all go. The fucking staff used to be like, yo, how's the business? They used to thought I was OVO. And I'm like, I'm not even OVO, bro. Like, I've been kind of like tapped in with the EXO guys, which is mad love and respect. But I'm just me. I'm just kind of coming through with some drip and some cool ideas. And, you know, that just kind of translated. But I started seeing, I'm like, you know, every Sunday there's this thing called Live and everyone's there. Mm. And I'm just looking at my Instagram with this little fucking four by four. I'm like, yo, like the life is right there. Mm. 
down and, here in Miami. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I mean, for everyone is like, what's Live? Live's a big nightclub here, probably the most legendary nightclub. Shout I think it's the highest grossing nightclub. Yeah, I mean, you know, shout out to the guys that's running David Grumman and and uh and you know uh yeah. was it Michael Gardner who runs the the Sundays par- portion of it, and that's what got big. It was like it was a live on Sunday, King of Diamonds Monday, you know, mm-hmm. uh, re- verbatim Lil Wayne. So these guys, they were like putting in their work and then like the music guys were then, you know, sending that. And it all is a flywheel it's, effect. It's a flywheel effect. So I'm in Toronto. I'm like, like, oh, the world is here. The girls are there. So I came to visit my cousin and this is all post COVID shit. So, you know, the deals down here were amazing. Mm-hmm. I was like, 500 bucks down. I got an apartment, two months free. Like, yeah, Miami used to be cheap. Miami used to be litty. Now it's like, now it, I'm it's getting the toasted. Second most expensive city. Getting toasted down here. <laughs> <laughs> day by day, I'm just like, yo, is my rent going up? Let's go. Yeah, what's like, happening? But yeah. at the time, it was amazing. So then I just, I came down here. I got my spot and I just, I had a buddy that lived next door to live and we were just going there every night. I was going there every night and I was meeting wow. guys. And that was just part of the social networking. It's like, I got to right. meet the guy at the door. The guy at the door is the most important guy. Right. Because he's going to let me in the door. So. Start there. You start yeah. with your face card. I mean, so there's this thing like social equity. It's like your face, your face card. Like sometimes you might see somebody, they don't know who you are, but they seen you. They're like, yeah, I seen buddy before he came through. He's fly. He had a couple girls, whatever. Like he's good. Right. No money involved. It's just like, he's good. Because they're seeing you and you're part of the social light um, experience. So they want people like you in there no matter what. Okay, so let's break. Th- is, that, is that who you're associated with? It's like who you're associated with, how you carry yourself. I mean, if you act like a fucking asshole, you're probably yeah, not I getting mean, in. It's a balance. I mean, because there's been so many times where like I would go to meet people and I just kind of be there early or be there late and I'm by myself. But I carry myself a certain way. Like I don't bend or fold at the door. You're not gonna charge me all this ridiculous shit. I live next. I live down the street. Mm-hmm. Like if I gotta pay, I gotta pay. If I come with a girl, I look out for the girl. But if I come with multiple girls, you letting us in because I'm like I'm bringing shit to the table. Right. I don't gotta leave with these girls. You could take them if you want to move them around. I don't care. Right. But like you know, like there's that there's that what I'm bringing to the space. So sometimes if you're just like a real gentleman, you're like yo, like I understand there's a process, there's a line, but just you know, it's me and these two girls. Like what can we do? They're like, yo, don't even worry about it, buddy. You good. They'll, they'll, you know what they'll do? They'll check your drip. Mm. And they're like, okay, buddy got that shit on. Okay. And they let you in. Right. I right. can't, if you got on some regular shit, I don't know what the experience is like. <laughs> I always kind of get a nice little like, yo, he got that shit on. Like, man, he gotta be somebody. He's right, good. Right. Right. So like at the end of the at the end of the day, this stuff, like this stuff, if you don't let it go to your head, it can it can be a powerful tool to get you in the door. Oh, to for get you- sure. Absolutely. It's a, it's a tool. It's like you got to look at it for what it truly is. I mean, like you invest in X, X will then drive you this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I look, you could be saying there's been so many times I'm like at a at a spot or a club and maybe the guy at the door, you know, to be dormant. And they're not the most knowledgeable of what is fly, but they can just still sense it. Like, all right, well, like he wouldn't just cut this line. Right. If he didn't. And then the, the 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 visual helps, and then they're like, okay, like they're putting the pieces together. They're putting they, they got to add it up a little bit too. Now, if you get a cool door man, like someone that just really knows, or right. you know, I work with a couple guys, you know, I, I try to like, I try to insert myself with them, right, and be like, yo, look, bro, like if you want that shit, I'll get it for you. We can go take a walk. So now you start to build that relationship with them, and now they start to learn, and then they start to kind of be able to decipher shit too, right. But when I would go, I just be like, yo, bro, like it's just me, it's just the girls, whatever, and they're like, all right, like he coming respectful. He's, he's a gentleman, like he got that shit on, let him in. Right, let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. What's interesting here is also like, people go like, hey Nick, how do you how do you balance work and play? It's like, dude, you're not balancing work and play, you're doing the same thing at the same time, at all, all seven days a week. Bro, it's so crazy, I was just, so I was just telling you a story about you know me being at Live, like, I mean, some of the best places for me to do business is, is Booby Trap, Live, these places because that's where like everyone's there and like their ego is in a flex. Hmm. So me, I have no ego because right. I already know I kind of killed you with the drip. Like, I, like, it's, like <laughs> it's just like, I don't, we don't even get You're I, already dead. I don't have, look, let's be clear. I don't have the most bread amongst all the people I be right. with. Right. I don't have the most celebrity or stuff. I just be the dude in the cut that like the girls is know in, and respect. Invincible. It's like, yo, like, so the girls know to make that little left turn to come show love and pay homage <laughs> and respect. And then they'll go back to business. They'll right. go back to business. But like they know. So it's it's cool. But like I'll be there with my friends and the guys that we're out with. And they're like, yo, I like them bands. I need right. them shits. I'll be like, well, before you throw two bands on her, 
<laughs> Send me two bands right now. I'll get you the pants. Set it want. aside. Set it aside or whatever. And sometimes they'd be like, yo, bro, here, take the money, do what you want. And do it now, uh -huh. throw it in the air, whatever you want. I'm like, nah, like I'm going to take your money. I'm going to do the right thing, get you your shit first. Right. Then we'll come out and celebrate again. But it's also kind of that moment where you're like, you know, they're wearing like their best, their Sunday's best, whatever, but right. whatever we are. And and they'll check what you got. You know what? You see it. That's the homies. Like, you see it. And then they just kind of want what they want. I'm like, bro, if you need anything, like, I got you. Right. And then we have a good time. Then they hit me tomorrow. Like, yo, D, I need that shit for tonight because we're going out tonight. Okay. So then I start working. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the best office. You know, the best office is when you got it, when everyone's got their shit on, you know? Well, I mean, it's, a, it's genius, obviously. <laughs> it's genius <laughs> because you it. get to hang at your office kind of is a lot more fun than my office. Let me tell you. I know. This is a dope spot, though. I like no. this. <laughs> I like this office. <laughs> my office, yeah, my office, like the Ace of Spades never comes out of my office. You know what I mean? Like there's See, a little I coffee. Should've, should've, there's like an espresso. That's what comes out of my office. I should have changed the nature of the game. I should have, you know, really drink chance. Yeah. This one up. <laughs> Shout out to Nori and those boys. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's like it build, build your business in your vision. It doesn't need to involve a desk. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it's funny. Like, I think for me and, and all of this, you know, it was like, there was no path for like how you become a plug on a There's no path. Right. There's not that. a YouTube video you go how to I mean, maybe now. sell high end fashion to celebrities and athletes. Was there a video that you watched on that? I'm no, guessing. bro. Like I no. just you know what it was? I was in school and I learned all my friends was going to accounting firms, Deloitte, PwC, la la la. They were right. all going to the, the, to do the shit. And I was going to commercial real estate as I worked for BP. And I was a suit and tie guy. I was clean though. I was real clean. Yeah. But it, was, it was cold. And I was like, yo, man, this is just not me. Like, right. I'm like a whole nother person underneath this. And I had already started my business. I was doing things, but I just saw this like, this need for, you know, like to be authentic and be original of like who you are. Uh -huh. So part of that was like, I was like, well, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no blueprint for this. I'm going to make a blueprint. You got to blaze and, your and, own and path. I, and, I, and I blazed my own path. And now, it's crazy, you know, I had got invited from Parsons School of Design to come do this like host thing with streetwear and talk to the, you know, uh, you know, all the Heron Preston and, and Ruigi and all these right. guys. And, you know, those are guys that run Rude and in uh in HP. But, you know, I'm just like, you know, you start getting those opportunities because you were authentically yourself. Right. If I had continued to go make corporate money and do other things. There's no telling if those opportunities would have presented themselves. They never would have. Uh, because you, they would have just gone right by you. They would have been like buddies, like, uh, I don't know, like a junior account manager. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, hey, well, you're also you're also on the hardest drug known to man, the, the, the paycheck, the salary. Yeah. That's the hardest drug to get off. For sure. And, and then a huge part of that, you know, for the business is like, okay, so you find what you love doing. You're kind of around the people that you want to be around. But like, how do you make this make sense? And... You know, luckily, I think that was the econ in me that just understood there's like, yo, supply and demand. Yo, there's only so many, you know, we think about like the Jordans and the Yeezys, like shit is like limited right. in your city. I mean, it's lim it's not limited across the world, but it's limiting your city. So you got to have one relationship with a guy that can help you get it. Mm -hmm. You got to like, you got to have some kind of leverage to help you get what you want. So I just saw that. I was like, you know what? Like, this is going to be where I'm going to start to kind of like figure it out. And once I started realizing like who my client base was, I was like, well, look. When I go to dinners, they spend thousands. When we go to buy drinks, they spend thousands. When we do anything, we spend thousands. So right. thousands are the hundreds for these guys. Right. You go to Dior right now. You can go any Dior, Gucci, any store. To buy a t-shirt is like a thousand bucks. Right. I mean, my t-shirts, they're more fire. They're one of one. Mm -hmm. And they're 360 each. You just got to know me. The hard part is if you don't know me, you're not going to get one. Right. Because my social media, I mean, because the Instagram shit don't connect. Out. <laughs> yeah, so, which is like totally to me. That's like the ultimate paradigm flip when you're when you're in the streetwear business and you're in this this networking business and you're like, dude, I don't. Social media isn't really even a channel for me. It's really not. <laughs> and like I think for me, like what I use social media for is like it's a great way to kind of like oh like I meet you know like we I meet you we can connect and yeah. at least where I can kind of like a it's phone book yeah, with, like a, with photos attached it's to it a, it's a phone book and you know I'm still more old school I'm like you know I, I break the world up like it's like you live in the real world the matrix and the metaverse so I gotta ask people when I meet like when I meet girls I don't know. about like yo like which planet where, do you live where do you exist like how how do you communicate mm -hmm. where do you exist because meaning where uh, right where do you where, where do you, where is your brain I'm in a, a computer I'm, and a I'm phone a, I'm a street guy I wear street wear. 
I want to call you. Like I'm like, bro, right. I'm outside. I don't want to like DM you and you're like doing something else because that's not typically how people are communicating. Right. But you have a, a huge portion of our generations that are communicating that way. Yeah. They they're afraid to get on the phone and talk. They don't like confrontation. Correct. So it's different, you know. So I gotta be like, yo, like, you know, how old are you? Where are you at? And right. Obviously, if you in TikTok and all that shit, you're in the metaverse. Like you're in right. another world. Like right. I don't know how the, how I wound up in TikTok because you know like I mean you're a chameleon, bro. You can you can be in all of the world. like you. Can, some people can be in all the worlds. Like I I can be in all the worlds, but I just I don't thrive in right. those other worlds. Like I'm like the middle people like to check like in Instagram people like to check on and see what I'm doing. Like uh -huh. I don't have a crazy amount of followers, but people always watching what I'm doing. I'm like right. damn, they don't like nothing in this shit I'm doing, but I know they like because they always watching. Right. But then like you know I got my real homies like you know maybe sub two hundred guys that I'm like yo bro like they're actual friends. Actual friends we call and we talking. I got Facetime. A lot of my friends are hooped overseas, so we're okay. big on Facetime. So yeah. if you don't Facetime me, then I know we don't really like. <laughs> you don't exist. You don't really exist in our, in our <laughs> real time. So, so no, I mean, but that's just, that's just kind of like how I would sector things out, how I kind of communicate with people, how I'm trying to learn how to better, like, you know, work those, those angles. But, you know, when you're putting the numbers together, you just got to be confident in like, if this fit is this, you know, and I, we could break that down in a second. Like if you want X, which is one garment, it costs X. How do I make money? Right. You know, like, is there a markup? Is there a commission? And, is there and, a fee? You have and, a monthly fee. How, what? Like, yeah. and not mean, that some, we need to, you know. No, of course. And like, you know, depending on the business, like, I mean, like, you could do retainers. Your retainer could be like, hey, look, you pay me this every month. And I'm or, your stylist, and I do this, this, and this. Exactly. I do this, this, and this. Or, you know, for me, I'm per garment. I just make guys' lives easier. So it's like, whatever the cost of the garment is, is 200 a garment. So you just add that on top. Got it. Um, you know, if there's, you know, and and like, part of that is like, I'm gonna do my due diligence. So like, if the sweater's a thousand and, you know, plus tax or whatever, it's gonna be your 1200 plus tax. Um, that 200 is going to me, it's pretty much going to business for like, me finding the piece, because you probably couldn't just find that piece. Right. And then two, bringing it to you. Like, I'm gonna bring it to you. If it's something where like, you live overseas, I'm gonna ship it to you. I don't try to do shipping. I just pull it out of 200 bucks, like, especially if we're homies because mm -hmm. it becomes more relationship thing. It's not about money for me. The money thing is like the smallest because mm -hmm. I got, you know, it's a lot of work that you do, man. It's a fair amount of work, but when you enjoy it, it's not work. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you're on a treasure hunt for cool shit. Half basically. the time, half the time <laughs> people don't even realize it. I'm literally shopping for myself. Mm. I just have like, if I'm shopping for myself and I see a sweater that's your size and it's only one, they don't got my size. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, they don't got it my size. I guess sure I'll get it for you. I'm like, <laughs> JC, you want this shit? KV, you want? I'm, I'm gonna just be like, and then I'm like, yeah, get that shit, D. And then I end up buying stuff for them. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, so it's never bad. And, and then it's dope because you get the relationships with the store managers. They cutting you the little, I, I, you want the champagne? I'm like, uh, we good. Right. Like, they, they take care of you because you're the right. one shopping. You're a great customer. You're, you're great, the best customer. You're the best customer. You're, you're 10 customers in one. And exactly. Yeah. And trust me, I, I go to Chanel sometimes, no disrespect to Chanel, but I go to Chanel sometimes and they look at me like I'm fucking crazy. I'm like, yo, like I'm just trying to buy shit for other people. Right. And I love it. So now I play this game where like, you know, I, I, I have like, like big homeless drip. Like I got like <laughs> bare knuckle sweaters what that are that mean? it's crazy. It's like shit that costs a lot of money. But, but it doesn't just, look like it, it just costs doesn't a lot. look like anything. Like I mean, same thing like with the veggie sweater. And like when you go in these stores, like, you know, you're talking like high, high end. So they're uh -huh. like they're looking for like the L V. They're looking for the shit. They're looking for the flagship brand logos for people see, that don't really just, know they, anything. They, just, right? they write you off. So like now I'm like, oh yeah, they don't even know. I'm about to like go ham because I gotta buy this shit for these people today. Right. And so you got that corporate some, card and some, energy and some, coming and some, out. And, some, and sometimes, like, they shit, they shit, bro, it'd be weird. They'd be shitting on you. They're like, oh, like, they'll have you waiting in line. They'll, like, not want to service you. But when I go in there, I'm like, just give me this, this size. The card's right here. I don't want nothing. Don't even talk to me. Right. I don't need an espresso. And then they're like, are you sure you don't need it? I'm like, I don't need anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a balance. But like, but when you I'm not these, surprised, man. When you go to these cool stores and they know you, and they like, bro, you could walk into Bodega. You could walk into. Who are the guys in the design district where you go up the stairs? V starts with a V. Verboten or Ve oh Veblen. Veblen. Ah, uh, you talking about my man Hugo? So Dude, I was in. That. I walked into Veblen the other because I went into off. I went shout into out off to Veblen. You know, yeah. Shout know. out to Veblen. Those guys were awesome. I, I walked into Off White and I was just like, I was looking at some some of the Off White sneakers. I I, I don't. You saw I, my boy Eric and those guys. I saw, there. and they said, "Dude, they said, dude." You haven't thing. been in in a while. I said, I've never been in here ever. And they're like, oh shit, you're that guy from TikTok. And I was like, yeah, man. I, they're like, you can, can, can I get you anything? I'm like, oh, I'm looking at, I was just looking at with the courts. I was, just, I was like, maybe okay. I get some courts. I don't know. Yeah. So looking at the courts and they're like, dude, you got to go around the corner and go to Veblen. 
and see my boys. <laughs> I was like, it's different. And by the way, when people say this to me, mo the average person goes like, yeah, cool. And they don't do it. I do it yeah. every single no, time yeah, for real because you know, every single time these guys, what they're doing is they're, they're inviting you into, into their world, into their world. And, and, and so many people are just like, what the fuck is that? And they don't go. I've never they're, heard of it. They're like, Fendi's right here. And yeah. they just go to Fendi. I'm like, all right. It doesn't have a Google page. Right. I'm out. But like, you know how many times I've walked in there, I done ran into Trippy Red, I done ran into Offset. Like, you'd be like, holy shit, my fuck is in here. And it's not a big spot. Dude, it it's, was packed it's just, with people. It's curated for a very specific community of guys. Right. So so basically, it's consignment, but for extremely high-end, like limited designers. Yeah, limited designers. Men's, menswear fashion, you know? And, it's, and yeah. Hugo's my guy. That's why I was saying, like, you know, me and Hugo, we run by, like, this whole, like, jujitsu jedi knight kind of thing like they know like even when certain pieces drop in there mm -hmm. they'll give like, you a call or text like, Yo, D, you gotta come on down i was like all right i'm coming uh, i had a great experience <laughs> in this store <laughs> so i walk in and they're like number one everyone in the store knows who i am and i'm like completely shocked and they're like dude we love your shit blah 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 what do you need i go <laughs> this is terrible i was like you ever see that guy on social media called zeus it's this old, like, European guy with a beard, drives a Lamborghini. Oh, I shouldn't even be telling this story. I shouldn't even be telling this story. I have seen him. This is humiliating that I'm going to tell this story. I go, he wears this he wears this Balmain sweater, mm -hmm. a Balmain sweater. Yep, yep. And uh, do you have that? And the guy's like, well, I might have that. I was like, it's like a wide neck. I was like, I want to look like that guy Zeus, man. A's don't really <laughs> take well, man. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm talking about? He like, there, he doesn't do anything but get into or get out of a Lamborghini. Yeah. And you're just like, I don't know why. I know you're the coolest guy on planet Earth. For sure. So for me, you know, I'm, dude, I'm on, you know, social, I just, I wish I wasn't on it so much, but <laughs> I'm on my phone. I see this guy Zeus who's in the he's event. Crushing it. He's crushing it. He doesn't even say anything. I'm like, I'm working way too hard. Like, for sure, I have to talk. This yeah. guy just gets out of a car. He just gets out of a car and panties drop. And, and just, just, it's insane. And he's in Monaco for some. I'm like, what happens when the camera shuts off? Like, do you have a high pitched voice? I'm hoping. Like, you've got it. Something has to break. Yeah. Because the guy seems like the coolest guy. Yeah, you never know. But that's that's. And I was just gonna knock his look off. Yo, bro, that's that's <laughs> that's the power of social media. Like, you get these like, thirty second clips to be your best and like. There's no talent. It's like I remember, like I remember they used to show like the extras of like uh, you know when Shaq and all the guys would be doing all their stuff. Right. Like they would, they Shaq would come out and go shoot a basketball. This dude having flip flops. I'm like, they got all suit with flip flops. <laughs> But you didn't. But you don't. But you don't. It's out of frame. It's out of frame. That's and, why I'm wearing pants today, by the way. And, and you know, like TikTok, you, know, you don't need pants. And look, I mean, I don't know if the viewers can see the, the drip, but like, you know, like I come complete all the time. Right. I got on some Miharas right now. Betty socks, dope shit. Like. It's just different, and you know that's one of the things that like Hugo at Veblen and 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 Justin Reed in New York and these guys they're curating, like, like they know based on the garments they bring in these spaces. They knew every single piece in the whole store. Well, they know every store. Yeah, they, I mean he knows every piece in the store and every and every price. But more importantly, like they know which pieces to bring in the store to bring in certain types of people. I see. Okay, you can control the market by what's sitting on the shelf. For sure. And it's what he was kind of saying to me with the zoo sweater. He's like, you know, I don't know if we would have sold this thing here. Yeah, he's like, he's like, I don't, because so like. He's like, I don't want that H is guy coming in here. H I'm is, like, well, it's too late. He's H already is here. super funny, like, you know, like, and it, and you got to think, like, with fashion, it, it changes a lot. So, you know, for him, you know, I would say, like, right now, if you were to go over there, like, you know, from a consignment buy kind of standpoint, He's going to take, you know, uh, Rick, Rick Owens. He's going to take, you know, Louis Vuitton, some Dior pieces. Dior had their day. It's mm -hmm. not crazy like that anymore. Um, some capital drip. If you've got some fire skull pieces. Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Hedy Slimane, Hysteric Glamour. Like, there's a lot of brands that, like, he's willing to take. But, like, he won't take no FOG. He won't mm. take, like, you why know. Why not? Oh, fear I mean, F FOG, fear of God. Yeah, why why not? He won't take a lot of brands. Because he won't take off white. Really, he used to take a lot of off white because okay. some of this stuff it, starts to go it, down. It transitions, right? right? But see, that's where like that's where I win because like like usually you know how they say like uh, you know your grandfather's denim is better than your denim because uh -huh. it was real denim, right? It's like the archival stuff has its value. Okay, so like now these pants, I mean, dude, like I mean, I think I paid. I mean, respectfully, I think I paid like 400 bucks for these pants. Right. And I mean, I remember one of these pants when they first came out, it was probably like, like 1200 okay. something crazy. And 
the good thing is on the back end, you get it for the low. Right. And then it's no longer available widely. Right. So it's more scarce. And when you put that shit on, everybody wants it. So you create the demand. Uh huh. And now the price is probably more than retail. Right. Because you got to find it in that person's size. And it's just like the legwork is like, well, now, buddy, I don't know. Like, I might find one pair. They're like 2500 Like, you want them? Right. Fuck it. Run it. That's where you got to have the good customer. The customer's got to be able to do that. Like, right. you can't have like customers like, oh, well, you need them for 200 like, and you're ch- And you're a bit, you're curating your book of customers. You're not oh, going to work right. with someone who's going to drive you fucking crazy. No, absolutely not. Okay. So we, we, yesterday we had, we had someone in that has, uh, my buddy, my buddy, Ned, he, he has an agency, a huge agency, right? Okay. And the whole thing with the agency model is it takes one bad client to completely fuck up the agency oh, for sure, because man. one bad client runs three or four times as many resources as they should. Mm-hmm. Your, your, your account manager is pulling their hair out, right? Your devs are rebuilding things that they already built twice the wrong way according to the customer like you can fold your entire business with a bad customer and it doesn't matter sure. if it's an age you're running an agency model basically yeah, for sure absolutely and like it's crazy too because like so for example the other day i had a guy he comes from out of town so i used to work <clears throat> for a place gallery department for those that know gallery department big cool brand out of la um you know they, they're really kind of you know focused on like upcycle denims and other things shout out those way but you know like I was there. I mean, we did a million dollars in a month with these guys in the design industry. We was fucking crushing it. I mean, I remember the days I was working, I didn't even get a lunch break. Like, it was just- we So you're, just, you're so, just flying pro- product out the store. Product is just flying in and out. There's a line outside all day, every day. People from around the world come in to get it. Like, I mean, your average t-shirt, 250. Your jeans, 1300. Like, you know, we're doing 60 grand a day. Like, we was cranking wow. it. Like, really cranking it. And I was just like, you know what? That showed me that, like- one like the demand for it, it showed you that it, it's possible like to it's do. possible like the demand is there for it if you create enough buzz and hype mine is like it's so if you know you know i don't even really want to like 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 you know provide for the masses it's truly like yo if there's a good relationship at hand and you can drop the 360 in a t it's not the craziest thing like i was talking to my boy john sancho you know plays for manchester united just earlier like but he can drop it like he come four thousand on a t-shirt he could do that but he's also like, oh, Dean, you know, like, I fuck with you, so I'll buy, like, $4,000 worth of your shit. And right. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, that's love. Right. So, you know, you you you, you balance it all out. But, man, when I was working there, I just, I just saw it. I was like, man, like, this is the machine. Like, and as long as you're able to kind of, like, will the machine, mm. you learn how to put it all in, in, in motion, you know? It's like a, it's one part psychological, one part retail. One part, oh, sure. Like physical, I, fucking moving cloth, bro. I used to. It, there used to be this other spot in the I'm design. Flip this. Yeah, of course. There used to be this other spot in the design district. Um, it was called the Arsenal. I don't know if any of you guys had ever went, but it was like we used to sell cool shit, like submarines, helicopters, airplanes, kinds of cars. What do you mean, like actual submarines? Yeah, like 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 two, three million dollars submarines. You're allowed to drive a submarine. No, I, one, let's be clear. <laughs> no. I don't submerge under shit. I don't go underwater. You're not a, you're, nah, you're a above I'm water kind of guy. I'm above water. I float, I walk on water. You're an above shit. marine. Like I, you know. So you're a super marine. Exactly. I don't go underneath. <laughs> you know, I can swim. Don't get it fucked up. I can right. swim. I'm not, I, yeah. I know for the viewers, I can swim. Right. But like. That was clear. Yeah. It's just that you don't submerge yeah, nah, I don't and not gills. come out again. I don't, I don't, nah. So, so for me, it's like, I'm a land creature. I drip on land, you know, but. Right. You don't drip on the sea you drip drip. on land yeah nah but but it's just funny so we used to sell all this crazy stuff in there and we sold clothes but you know it really teaches you like how important the atmosphere of a space is because you've got a fucking submarine sitting next to a t-shirt all of a sudden that that 500 hundred dollar t-shirt looks pretty cheap dude i mean this is just this is marketing psychology so 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 when people so i was svp of sales there and you know shout out to patrice mignon the owner of the store uh, French guy, super cool, but he had his own way. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but he just liked it a certain way. But that way didn't sell product fast enough. Okay. And, you know, when you're in that business and you're in the design industry, you're up against everyone else. So the moment that that family comes out the garage and they would go to our store first because we were right there by the garage. You got to get them first. Yeah. Once they make that loop to Louie and Gucci and Finney, dude, chances are those families are like depleted for the day of like tapped out with their spending. Yeah. So you got to get them first. 
So I would get them with the classic Biggie Smalls tracks, playing good music. Making it feel like you know, a party inside. Making it feel like, yo, this is something that you might want to come check out. Mm. So now they come in. You know, I'm the ringleader. I do the little circus wheel. Like, hey, how's it going? Mm -hmm. I'm going to Arsenal. And like people are like, what the fuck is this store? Right. I'm like, bro, we sell everything in here. Submarines, helicopters, cons. I was like, we even got some fire. Look, and this is how I'd be like, we even got some fire t-shirts over in the corner. You got to go check those out. Right. Because I knew that no one's walking out with a submarine. Like, no point <laughs> is selling something that no one's going to leave in, but you can sell them something that someone will leave in. And you're leaving with a little piece. And you're leaving with a piece. So now, like, and granted, even in the design district more specifically, 360 bucks is still cheap for a t-shirt in a neighborhood like that. Mm. But that's still money, especially if you can buy one or two of them. So it's definitely still money. It's, and it's still money. The design but, district is the highest end shopping district in Miami. If Kate, in case you don't know what we're talking about, when we're talking about the design district, yeah. it's a shopping district in Miami that is now has become world class. Shopping. Absolutely. You know, shout out to Craig Robbins and Dakra for putting out, putting it all together. It's been a project for, for them over the years. And, I mean, some of the most beautiful things that they've been able to do has been amazing. They integrate art and fashion and people. It's and, fucking amazing. Yeah, it's space and place. And and I think that's a really cool reason why, you know, I live in the district. I, I choose to live there right. so I can wake up and be at the pulse of what I need mm. to do. That's where I work. That's where mm -hmm. I live. That's why I told you, like, this was kind of close because we're kind of close. Proximity, proximity to work. So, so I mean, I yeah. just I just saw that. And I was like, yo, look, like, you know, this is, this is where it's at. You know, you got to be in motion if you want to. If you want to be in touch, if so, yeah, it, like what I what I'm writing about a lot, like in my newsletter, I'm, writing, I'm working on this book. It's like someone found out that Elon Musk is like living in a fucking like shack next to the rocket site. OK, <laughs> so everyone's like, it's a PR stunt. It's this, it's that. If you own a business, you run a business, you know, it's not a fucking PR stunt because if you don't want to sleep in a shack, you don't, you're not going to sleep in a shack, yeah, right? Shack. The reason he's sleeping in the shack is because the two hours it would take or three hours to get from Beverly Hills to the fucking launch site or wherever it is, right? Yeah. That isn't worth it. And that doesn't allow him to have the fucking pulse on whatever it is that they're doing at the launch site. So it's like, I hear people is like, you know, Hey, well, where should I get my place? It's more expensive in this, in this city center to use the, like, that's what they say in yeah. Europe, but right. But it's like. If you're not in the thing, you might as well not even be in the game. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like, you know, and, and there's trade-offs. Like, so for example, like, I know this may sound crazy, but like, I feel like at this point in my life, I afford the luxury to not drive. So I don't drive, mm -hmm. you know, whether that be, I call uh, Uber black, a chauffeur or whatever, or like, oh, my friends drive, my friends got, they trade, they do crazy shit, they're in the league, they got crazy cars. Mm -hmm. So I get around, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I can always get around on my Uber. So, you know, for me, I'm like, all right, if that's going to be a trade off, I can spend more money in where right. I live right. in my place versus, you know, paying money to then travel to the places I would go to. Right. Yeah. I think everyone forgets how much it costs to own a car, to fill the car, to, to charge travel, the car, you know? to travel and to get around. And for me, it's all about time. It's but, time. I love I love pulling up to any of these major events or Art Basel during during anything. And I get out at the front. And I don't got to worry about shit. I'm going right. to park this car. I don't got to worry about this guy scratching my rims. None yeah. of that. Like, there's a whole there's a whole psychology around the car, right? Because number one, I'm fr like I'm from New York. Nobody has a freaking car. Right. Period. Right. right. So if you're crushing it, you're getting driven around. If I mean, if you're really crushing, it, you're getting driv driven around. Yeah. But mostly, and, and for me, it's like you're jumping in a freaking yellow taxi. Like there was a a democratic way in New York City. You're jumping in a yellow taxi, whether you're a hedge fund manager or you're fucking working at a deli. Everyone looks the same. Everyone looks the same. Oh, oh, and also you're riding the subway, whether you're the mayor of fucking New York or you're like a homeless person. Like right. everyone's together. That was the beauty of New York. Yeah. Now here you, it's different. Here it's a little different. <laughs> <you know? laughs> it's different. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes I'd be, I'd be sleep. You take a taxi, you end up in friggin' I'd be sleep, somewhere else. I'd be sleep, and I'd be like, I hear like just the sounds. But I was like, well, that was McLaren. That was, you know, that's something crazy going by. Right. But you just, it's just different. Like you know, I think out here where it's nice and sun and sunny all the time, like the pull up game is very strong. Mm. So when you talk about like that physical presence, it's like your appearance yeah, showing up. But but think about it. Like there's guys that are like car aficionados they're like i love cars mm -hmm. i like cars too but i don't want to own them i don't want to drive them like unless it's just like i look at cars like art so it's like if it's not going to sit in my living room right or do something cool like then i don't really need it well your car so here's here's this is an interesting sort of paradigm here it's like your clothes are working for you your car you know a car wouldn't work for you 
Not really. That's not selling your business. Yeah, because when I'm inside the club, no one knows what the fuck I drove. Right. And I don't know what they drove. It's not like I could bring the car and like, yo, bro, you see me sitting here in my fucking... <laughs> well, yeah, then you're not sector. transacting, it, right? Exactly. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, when I leave, if I leave, or when I pull up, people see that. Right. So, like, when they see that, it kind of <laughs> puts you in this, like, all right, buddy, somebody. Right. But your clothes can do that, too, right. at a cheaper price, and it's just like... It's more authentic to you, right? Because like more than likely, like you ain't renting your clothes, like <laughs> them are your clothes, right? You might be renting a car because right. it's just something that you do when you go to Miami, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, well, it's like it, to me, it, to me, it, it, there, there's this phenomenon, right? So like, if I get out of a Ferrari, my video gets two times the views. So what does that make the Ferrari? Makes it a fucking smart tool, it right? Makes it a smart tool, or it just makes people like you know. I guess nosy. It makes them like, well, like, like, because I think about it, like, in the world, there's like, there's brands, there's indicators of Ferrari, Rolex, symbols. Um, there's symbols that are like, you know, they're, they're, they're universal international sign, signs of success. Yeah. So when people see those things, they kind of associate you with like that crew. Right. Not realizing like, yo, like, you know, maybe this is not my car. Maybe this is just something I'm renting my friend's car. I'm following him. Who knows? Like, right. It's just, People don't they they remove that and they just put you in this in this bracket from A directly to B from A directly to B and 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 you know your clothes your clothes can do that but it just requires a little bit more like knowledge and education like mm -hmm. you know so like when you're talking to a very specific community i.e. the guys that go to Justin Reed and go to Bevlin when they see that shit they know they're like yo when you go over there they're like yo you snapped all the young jits they're like yo you snap you snap you snap because they're yeah. like they're talking about like how you put these pieces together. Mm. And I mean, in some cases, these shits be like mini car notes. Like the fits are expensive. Right. Yeah. I, I think people get my message wrong sometimes where I'm like, oh, you shouldn't wear this. You shouldn't. I'm not telling you what to do or what not to do. I'm telling you not to let it go to your head. Like oh, use, sure. it use it as a tool. Don't let it use you. Right. So there is no, there is no like, there isn't, there isn't a little code on your DNA that says you ha you're an Amex black card owner. There's not a little code on your DNA no. that says you drive a Ferrari. It's like, don't go to go don't go too far with this guys right because you can let it go too far sure. and then you become my rich guy character and the reason the rich guy character is so funny is because somewhere in the core of our hearts we know that it's bullshit oh yeah we know that it means absolutely nothing oh, when yeah. you strip someone down to their their their, their the, like nothing their bones it's all complete made up of Exactly. Bullshit. Exactly. Like that's why I always say, like the drip is in me. It's not on me. Like, I like that. Like it's I like re that. it's really in me. Cause like I mean, one, I've been doing this since I was a kid. My pops, like he's always been on like the drip and clothes and like certain brands. Like I mean, we growing up, we were big Ralph Lauren kids. Like I mean, yeah. I pay a lot of homage and learning to like the palettes of Ralph. Like you know everything that that man did and you know the storylines he built with the country and western shit and the boots yeah. here and the like. You learn how to blend those things and then you know i worked in corporate so i had to clean up a little bit i had to kind of the suits and the you buttons. play the game of where you but i always stayed at. i always stayed in in ralph right and but as i you know i had other little brands but i was like as i was kind of getting older and i was like you know i need to kind of do my thing yeah my dad was holding it down for a while i was like uh -huh. i was like I, i'm exploring other brands that like i liked and i just you know part of that is like how do you get the most expensive shit for cheap well you got to kind of you know mm. you got to do your leg work so that's what taught me how to find these pieces but i never let those pieces go to my head just because i'm like oh i got a rolex or i got a or i got to leave a time bag i'm not right. like oh i see you like get away from my shit it's like nah like i don't give a fuck about none of this shit like right and people like i i think the funniest thing is like i go to the club and like the guys like a lot of guys know like i'm plug on drip so sometimes they step on my shit, they step on my feet. Like, yo, I'm so sorry. I'm like, bro, I don't give a fuck. I like do, I'm like, do it again. Like, I like my shit fucked up. I like looking homeless. I like this shit. Even I know it's not. Because it doesn't mean anything to me. Right. It's in me. It's not on me. It just mm. I just like having the shit too, you know? Yeah. No, that's, that's a good way to look at it. Because w there's some there's something problematic when it becomes, like, when you when you take it too seriously, you become really a fragile yeah, it becomes, problematic it, it, person. It, like the, the 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 thing becomes your compass. You don't want that driving you in your directions and like looking at people how you look at them. Like I mean, like it was crazy. I went to Colombia, and like I mean, no one over there has anything on. They have no drip on the but, country. Yeah, I mean, okay, from where I was, like you know, I was in uh, Medellin. I'm just like you know, like no one's got on drip, right. respectfully. And you know, I took that as a cool opportunity to kind of like you know get some cool flicks, you know, while I'm in my shit, but also like. 
realize that that shit don't mean nothing. Like people are still, people, <laughs> it, like, it's a symbol that's meaningless. Yeah. It's a, like, cause when you go to a place where no one has it and like no one even recognizes it, right. or know anything, no, get me wrong. Like this is see, a brilliant, they, they see a big Balenciaga shirt. They might, they know what that they might is. Chop cause they have off. a fucking phone. They might want to chop an arm off it too. But like, usually like it just, it doesn't mean anything. So like, you know, here in, in the States or I mean, Miami where everyone is like, look good. They, they're the competition. <laughs> It, it keeps it, getting higher and it, higher and it higher. It keeps getting higher and higher. You just like, you can't let that shit go to your head. Like, you know, you got to always kind of just stay true to you, who you are. And, you know, I think like I said, like clothing is a way to express yourself, but don't let the clothing like, you know, dictate like how you treat people. Dude. Yeah. Like the, the meta, the meta, meta gene, the meta gene experiment is like, it's like this thought experiment that I, that I play with. It's like, it's called the last man on earth. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you're the last man on earth. You wake up, you've got, you know, the, you, you realize everyone's gone mm -hmm. and you go, well, I'm going to go out to the dealership, pick up something, <laughs> right? Cause the keys are going to be laying around somewhere. I'll find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you walk down the dealership and you pick up this sweet ride, right? You're like, man, this is sick. And you're kind of like, all right, like we'll do something else. Right. You go down the clothing store, you put on the six, whatever it is. That, and you're like, all right, it's getting kind of cold, man. And like, there's animals coming out. Like, how long before you go, give me a fucking militarized Jeep, some water, some food that's not going to go bad. Yeah. You're like, you don't give a shit zero to 60 yeah. and, or V12 versus V8. You're yeah. like, none of this means anything because it only means something when there's other people to bounce it around. To, to validate to it. To validate to, it. To say this is what's hot or what's not. And that's why I was like, <clears throat> even like when I was started, like when I first started like selling art, like one of the big things I would always talk about guys is like, yo, look, you know, what do you want your space and place to feel like? Mm. You know, think about the, like when you're, de when you're designing space, start with the end in mind and like, Dude. and really just like, Love you know, it. like, yeah. yeah, start with the end in mind because like, you know, when it's a fucking construction site and no one can see like where the couch is going to go, mm -hmm. just take a minute and think about it. When you're in your living room, do you want to like be sitting, looking at the fireplace, smoking a cigar with the TV here? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want that look and feel like? And then you get the guys like, yeah, I want it to be like this. It's like, all right, so now we're going to put the art right here. So you're looking at the art and you're looking out the window. Right. Like you start to create that for them. And and that's what essentially you're doing, like even with the drip and, 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 and with all this other stuff, you're just like trying to help people better understand like their sense of place in, in, in the world with the garments and the things that they have. Right. I mean, dude, start at the end is like my ultimate motto. It's like, you, you can't just go, I'm going to hustle today and then everything's going to work out. It's like you're become a directionless nightmare, right? Uh, you know, like you become a problem child. If you have an end in mind, you know how to build towards it. Oh, for sure. Because like you know I, when you're not on that path. And I believe that like everything that we experience in the days of are results of the things you did months, if not years before. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, being able to sit here um, and, and, and talk about some of these things and the guys that worked with, I mean, I remember a day when we were first starting my business and my grandmother's like kitchen table, yeah. I was in college when your like, grandma, like I'm going to be selling t-shirts for a hundred dollars. Our first t-shirt was a hundred dollars, 25 and sold out immediately. All that good jazz. Mm. She's like, you can't do that. No one sells t-shirts for a hundred bucks. I'm like, grandma sold out. Grandma, like hundred mm. t-shirts, hoodies, 11 of them, uh, you know, all numbered, boxed up, super dope. 250 hoodie she's like you can't do that i was like grandma like watch this shit boom they all sell out and then you get to a point where you're doing all these one-on-one t-shirts and then 360 and she's like people buy those things i'm like <laughs> i'm like yeah grandma like this is i mean look i'm like this is not even the craziest shit it's just right this is like the on-ramp to the highway is, of crazy the shit ramp to the highway and she's just like she's coming from a generation of time where she's like wow people pay money for crazy shit like yeah. that like she wouldn't believe it but you know it's true you know like it's all part it's all part of the, the the overall arching lifestyle package yeah which because grandma came from grandma maybe came from a time where the t-shirt was just a t-shirt yeah then the t-shirt evolves and like, like my family like you know we're, we're black and native american so like you know my brand is one piece is one pg one percent gallery um the native ties all one of one authentic vintage t-shirts and native american inspired and you know it was really kind of my twist to like kind of bring my culture and my people into um, you know, the streetwear kind of, you know, conversation because I, that just didn't exist at the time. It still really doesn't. So that's why I mm -hmm. kind of push it hard. And, um, and yeah, I mean, my grandmother, you know, she, you know, she's very, you know, native in her own, in her sense. And she just got 
her own little tradition. She's big on like outside space, you know, like respecting the land. Like, yeah. So like a lot of that type of stuff is like how I kind of like figured out how to put these blends together. Like, you know, the camo, the Pantone colors mm -hmm. and making sure these vintage grays kind of really match up. So a lot of what I've learned from her personally is now instilled into the way that I dress. Hmm. But it's just like for her, it was never like spend 300, 400 bucks on clothes. She's like, right. I could, I could feed a whole village with that type of shit. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And it's, but it's like, you know, this is, this is like, who do you listen to? I'm, I'm, it's like, you don't listen. We love grandma, but you don't listen to grandma. You listen to the market. Cause grandma's not buying the hoodie. Yeah, she's not your market. She's not my market. If the market's not, you know, she's my support bank. She's, she's like your support. One, she's, she's my culture. She's the, she's like where I'm like digging to get the best of the most or, organic, originality, creative right. stuff. But then I got to bring you it to move. my time yeah. and I got to put it into a garment that people like are like, okay, I buy that. Like I don't buy turtlenecks and shit that no one's buying. <laughs> I buy like t-shirts or shorts right. or, you know, and then you put it into the garment and then you let the market speak on it. Right. You know? And, and that's the one who's deciding whether you keep going or you stop. Not yeah. mom and dad, yeah. not, not oh, grandma no, and grandpa. Yeah. Like the market is going to tell you whether you go or Absol you pull back and change. Absolutely. And like I said before, like, you know, the, the, the culture of streetwear is different all across the world. So like, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, it's funny, like maybe what you produce in this market, um, isn't the right market for you. Mm. Maybe your online session, like, why am I always sending shit to Tokyo and Japan? Cause they fuck with it. Mm -hmm. So you just got to figure out. One, do I really focus my efforts in marketing there? Or two, do I go there? And, and drop down and, and go boots on the ground in Tokyo, the, wherever your market wherever is. Wherever your market is. And that's kind of how I felt like it was for me to come here. Like, I was like, you know, the North side was dope. I was running around with the six side guys and I was like, you know what? But the market is here because all the celebrities, all the athletes, when they get their breaks, when they get off concerts or when they have concerts, rolling loud and all that other shit, right. they come here. Yeah. So I was like, I need to be here. So I could just have a fucking plate of just drip for them to just pick from. Right. And that's how the business can like elevate. Right. With, with like minimal sweat, like you're sweating enough, bro. Why not make it even hard? Like, bro, I kid you not. I remember the days I was in Boston, I was kicking vineyard vines. I was kicking fucking yeah. like the basic nauticas and polos and yeah. hunter boots. I'm like, yo, all you girls and all you guys dress the fucking same. You're like Puritans. I can't even like. I can't even yeah. get this off. That hits pretty I, close to home, man. I know, I know, I know. It's like, hey, look, here it is, and motherfucking natives. We, we out here, but, but it was just, it was one of those things. I was just like, we all had those vineyard vine ties on the oh, dude. I mean, I had those Sears Sucker shorts too. Them shits was hard, yeah, but it just, yeah. it was like, it's a different uh, uh, geography uh, for people that are wearing, you know, the, a different type of style. Right. You know, if you go to the Hamptons and you go to these places, Cape Cod, like, there's a different energy that's there. Yeah. But when you're like in these cities, like you go to New York, you go to sell, you like, you're like, yo, buddy, buddy had a whole fucking bomber on. Like, right. shit gets different. So you got to cater to the audiences that one can obviously buy your stuff, two, that's into fashion and will buy your stuff. And, and the relationships at hand, man, you know? Yeah. I, I, what I really like is what it's like, you might be right. You just might be in the wrong freaking place Yeah. because like my whole thing is like, how, just how do you keep like tilting and turning until things just go and everything falls into place? Because like I, I talk to people, like I talk to people on the phone. They, they, they you know, we have a meeting, like I, I respond to my DMS. It's, it's so much comes down to like, dude, like, have you tried it like this or like this or like this or have you moved or have you, have you asked more questions because you're going to win eventually. How do you win faster? You, you make as much of those tweaks in the right direction as possible and then things start to click. So it's like, you know, it's as simple as looking at your purchase, your, uh, your, your oh, cr crack open your Shopify, yeah. see where the orders are going and go, huh, that's pretty weird. I guess that's my target market. Yeah. I mean, look, I, you know, greatest quote ever, shout out to Jim Jones. He was like, when you can't stay motivated, stay consistent. Mm. So, you know, like I always look at myself as a true North for my friends, a lot of guys, you know, families, kids, jobs, switches, all this type of stuff. But like, I'm that constant that's always calling my, yo, bro, what's going on? You good? Like, even when they don't talk to each other, I'm that glue. So mm -hmm. I always stay kind of at my own true north and I stay focused on my thing because I know that that's the thing that keeps me moving forward. So even though there's different variables, you got to make those adjustments until and figure out what works until things click. Like you just, if you keep staying on the same path, it's nothing wrong with switching the lane. You know, I've been right. in the same direction on the same highway and had to get in the express lane and get out of the express lane. And right. I'm not getting off of the exit. I'm still staying in, in my course. Right. But you just got to, you know, you got to make, you know, changes throughout. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good way to put it. I might steal that from you because like I, I talk about this course correction, but it's never like, yeah, you don't have to get off the, 
You don't, get on, highway. you don't have to get off the highway. You just might have to switch lanes. It might be like, okay, there's a bus in this lane. Right. So you're still going to get there, but you're just going to, if, if you choose to just take the slow route, you're going to be behind the bus. Right. You may not even know that there's nothing in front of the bus. If you go around that bus, you might be able to hit the slipstream. But, right. you know, you just got to remember like, yo, this is my course. This is where I'm good. Um, I may have to make some slight tweaks and adjustments while I'm there, but I got to stay on course. And that's, that's how you get to where you want to get to in life. And, you know, for me, it's been you know, a constant journey as it still is of, you know, being able to, to compete and, in and, and design with the best, you know? Yeah. There's, um, there's this, f- f- this crazy story. You, you're obviously heard of the band, the Kings of Leon, right? Yeah. So the Kings of Leon, they, they couldn't break in the United States of America. Like they just couldn't like just nobody was listening to them. They couldn't break. I mean, the probably one of the largest contemporary rock bands, obviously in, in the United States now, but it's like, and they just found that all of their all of their listens, all of their views were in the UK. So it, what did they do? Did they stop? No, they picked up and they, they they moved to the UK and then that's where their tour was. Their tour was like Manchester, fucking Leeds. Like it was just like London O2. Like they just that's how they did. And they did that for like a year or two years. And then the US was like, Oh yeah, you guys are pretty sick. You can come back now. Yeah, but I mean that's typically how it is. It's just like, you know, like you got to you got to go to where your cadence is. You got to go to where, you know, people, you know, I always say like, you know, where they where they'll be your cheerleaders. Right. You got to go to where the people are going to hype you up, man. Like it doesn't make sense to waste energy in places that aren't going to pour into you. Right. So, you know, when I was, you know, trying to flip all this cool stuff in Boston I and mean, granted, you know, I, they fuck with me there, too, because, right. you know, it's my city. But, you know, and then when I went to Toronto, it was the same thing because I was from another country in their world. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, yeah. it, it, I, I was lucky enough to kind of have that, you know, kind of keep going in the different places that I've gone to and even here, but you know, you just have to stay consistent and, and that consistency speaks true because it's like, well, he ain't changed. He ain't fall off. He's still coming through with that shit on. It's still stuff I've never seen. It's mm-hmm. still things that I want. And that consistency gets you that business and that rapport with people. So, you know, I know sometimes like when things get kind of challenging, a lot of people make you know real adjustments and try to go left or go mm-hmm. right. But it's like, nah, it's just, you know, famous quote, my boy, Vincent Council, let the play develop. Mm-hmm. You got to let the play develop. Because like, it's still early. Because it's still early. And, and and same thing with Ye. Ye, used to, Ye said the famous line. He's like, it's not that I'm not right. It's just that I'm not right right now. <laughs> You feel me? And then when the world catches on, everyone's like, oh, shit, you was right. It's like, yeah, I was right. It just you weren't ready to receive what I was trying to kick. Mm -hmm. So that's I believe that that's a huge part of life. And it's just it's that patience. It's like, you know, like I said, I'm a big hoops guy. So, you know, you get around that screen and you get to the corner and you're ready to take that shot. Mm -hmm. But buddy got to get Pat. He got to cross him up and still get to a spot where he can get you the ball. Just because you got there early doesn't mean it's not coming. Be ready because when when the ball comes, you got to take that shot. So you got to just let the play develop and slowly everything opens up and the game comes to you, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah. There was just, there was, there's something that I was developing this like, I have the same idea. Let's take a step back. (laughs) We were talking about like, you might, you might be right, but you're not right right now. Right. Bro, it's, it's crazy. You know, when Ye, when Ye dropped that bomb on us, I was like, damn. Yeah, that's a different type of bomb. I was like, bomb. damn, he's good. <laughs> I was like, because you never think about it. You're like, oh, either- I thought you were talking about the bomb. The recent bomb that oh, they I dropped. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what his more recent moves are, but okay. I just, I say that because like, Questionable. You know, some people like, we're just so conditioned, like, you know, and I think we had kind of started to like allegedly talk about this a little bit before, but it's like, we're conditioned by like society and Western civilization to believe certain things in certain ways. Like you got to go to school, you got to get a job, you got to get married, you got to, you know, all this type of shit. But like, you know, there's other, mm. uh, you know, like, you know, unorthodox ways of doing things. You know, you don't, everyone doesn't have to be a doctor and a lawyer. Like there's so many ways you can make money, i.e. myself. There was no path for this. I blaze this path. There's infinite ways to make money. Oh, it's my right. argument. Exactly. Because money is just a tool. It's like, right. it's so many ways to make food. Like it's just Money's an IOU and then it becomes a tool. So first money is just a way to store the cool shit that you did for someone else. They said, thank you. Here's your little, little store of value. And you say, thank you. Now I can convert this into other things that people make that and, are valuable for and, me. And it's a trade off. It's like you trade hard work, equity, sweat, whatever, labor, for a universal currency, mm-hmm. you then take that currency 
And then you buy something that either has value to you personally or can help you from a tools perspective. Yeah. So And you're helping someone else who made the fucking thing and sold it to you. It's it doesn't get lost. It doesn't get lost. It's commerce. So, like, you know, when I invest in these garments, I'm thinking about, like, okay, you know, fuck, I had to do all this run around. I had to do this, that, and the third. Maybe fly to this guy's house. Okay, so there's money involved. Mm-hmm. If I can get the garment at a certain price, then it makes me feel good. But it also makes me feel good is knowing what the value of that garment is to be or mm-hmm. will be. Because mm-hmm. then when I get rid of it, if I choose to and not archive it, like I can make money on it. Right. Right. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't just disappear. I, I have this idea. I don't. I, I have this weird idea. I, don't, I haven't verbalized it before. It is, but it's like it's like if you're when you were saying consistent, be consistent. It's yeah. like if you're consistent long enough you can like convince people of your reality. Like you, if you don't break your face, you like long enough, people just go, Oh, well he's, he's obviously that's the guy that does that thing. But, but that's true though, because if you're consistent in that, then you are doing that thing. Even if, <laughs> if I'm, if, you know, I don't want to get into the, to the glizzy game, but if you're a hot dog maker and you make hot dogs long enough and they're like, yo, I don't even know Fred, you know, buddy's name, but every time I see him, right. He got the hot dog truck. He up and down the block. He's, People eating hot dogs. Right. He's the hot dog guy. Right. And you assume he must be halfway decent at, at slinging the dogs around town, right? I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? He, he must be pretty good at it. Yeah, like, I'm not uh, saying what you're saying. No, no. But, but overall, <laughs> it's like, you know, like you get associated with the work that you do and the work that people see you do. So sometimes people need to see you do it to believe. For long you. enough. For long enough to believe that you do it. Because I think everyone is, is I, don't, I don't know if they're doing this consciously or, or subconsciously. They're testing you oh, to yeah. see if you're going to stick around the, long yeah. enough. You're like, hey. Measured. That was pretty good. What are you going to do next month? Okay, right. that was pretty good. I want to see, I want to know you're on the right path. I want to know that you're headed up and not down because then I can start to, then now I can start to invest maybe my, even if you're investing not money, attention. Right, my attention. And, so and, and, it's and, music, and, art, it's a, it's, it's a phenomenon. And a part of that is like not changing or like not getting right. off the exit. You're like, no, 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 this is the thing. This is the Trust thing. me. Trust me. Like if I get off the exit, and then I see, and then now, like, you know, six months from now, y'all see me like, yo, bro, you need to be trading this, that, and that. You're like, man, you was drip plug 10 minutes ago. Like, what the fuck right. happened? And it's like, that's true. Cause sometimes, like, sometimes as a creative, you can grow into other things. I'm, I'm doing it right now doing, with this podcast, dude, right? We're, we're doing it right now. But like, but part of it is also like, this is now becoming an addition to the lane of which I'm in. Right. And this is becoming a, a, an addition to the things that you're, you know, you're, you're feeding to the same. I'm feeding thing. the same beast. So yeah. it's like, it's not like, oh, well now I do this. It's like, no, nah, this is a part of this. <laughs> right. We're not fl- slinging the doji coin over here. No, yeah. not the doji coin. No, no, no. <laughs> but what you're saying is people that, that get that shiny, people get that shiny object syndrome. They're like, I'm a, I might be wrong because I'm not rich yet. So uh, let, let me take let me a tra- course let me and learn how to different. trade some fucking make-believe c- coin that's yeah. going to tank. Let me, let, me, let me trade something different and, and, and to do something different. And, and, and they wrong. abandon what they had before and they, quite and you, frankly, don't give a shit about you, what they're headed towards what now. What you do is you abandon the, the audience that fucked with you for that. Right. And those people are gone. Those, those right. people are gone because they they're now non-believers. It's like the moment that Jesus started slanging some other shit. It's like, they're like, damn. If Je- yeah, if Jesus all of a sudden was like, remember all that other shit I was talking about? You guys ever hear like Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, I'm out. They're I'm like, out, dude. Out, bro. You are not consistent, Jesus. You know, I can't. You have can't, blown the fuck in. I will not drown on your account. <laughs> You cannot. I seen you walk on water one time, but I ain't seen you doing it in a while. So right. you can't do it right now. I feel like you can't do it anymore. Feel, exactly. But they constantly keep seeing. They're like, Nah, man. I'll go out. There. He, he that. I believe that. it. I see him do it all the time. Okay. So <laughs> now I feel like I have to add. I feel like I have to add this to my like to my. I have to like scratch this into my brain. It's like consistency is no. When you said consistency, I was like, Yeah, okay. Well, consistency. I've you know. And now I'm like, No. No, consistency is so fucking central because consistency is you convincing the rest of the world about what you are passionate about. Yeah, it's just it's it's your it's your it's the beat of the tribe. It's like what makes you tick. It's like why you go left versus right or like if you constantly keep going left, but no, every time he went, he go left. Mm-hmm. Like it's like how you get people to understand the, the method behind the madness. Mm-hmm. It's like, so you got to stay true. That's why I said my true north is like, I'm always in my lane. Like when I'm with my friends, I hope like we'll be practicing shit. They're like, yo, D, pick up. No, 
I'm not mm-hmm. getting dunked on. I'm not doing <laughs> none of that shit. I'm not sweating. <laughs> I'm not trying to get bodied. I'm not, nah, like, and when my other homies want to go do other shit, right. like, I don't, like, I can be there. I can be present. Right. But my world. You is focused. To, is to get you dripped out when you're done with whatever you're doing. Right. To make sure that, like, the same time I could be passing you the ball while you taking free throws, I could also be finding your shit. Right. So, like, it, I don't, we don't, I don't feel like we all got to do the same thing. To, to live that lifestyle and, and, and be in those same places, it's more important that I'm doing what I do best to help the better of all of us. Yeah, no, that's cool. Be- because then you're not wasting your energy in things that you're not even interested in, really. Yeah. It's like, why does everybody think they have to play golf to do business? Dude, I I can't, my my, my dad w- w- tried to force me to play golf. I hate golf. That, that's Western civilization. Dude. <laughs> that's them telling you like, oh, it's a great place. I was like, business. this sucks. I remember the first time I, so I used to work corporate and by the way, it sucks for me. I don't just, I don't like hate golf. Like uh, golf's awesome, dude. I just, I'm not good at it. I never wanted to learn. There were other sports. I wanted to hit you over the head with a lacrosse stick. That was to me more of interest. What's what's the funny thing about golf though? When you go out there to talk business, the guy's like, ah, I want to talk business. Yeah, you're like, wait, the I fuck? learned how to play like, golf to talk business. To talk business. I literally man. spent 20 grand like, at oh, golf talk camp. in the office. Then we get in the office. It's Monday. Like, oh, it's too busy. Like, now's not the time. So it's really not even the most effective tool. <laughs> but I remember, I remember. It's a lie, basically. Bro, it's I a me- lie. I remember I was fucking, I was working corporate, and I had this guy, Sean. He he lived down in Atlanta, and he was like, yo, like, what you be doing with, with your clients and shit? I was like, man, you know, we go golfing and shit like that. Because I can golf. Like, okay. I, I got my clubs. I'm, I'm good. Okay. So. So, so wait, like, do we have to, now we have to fucking play golf together now? This is bullshit. No, we, no, we don't. But but this is what I'm saying. So my man, I was like, Sean, like, why would you be doing? He goes, man, we go to the gun range a lot. I was like, the fucking gun range? Okay. I was like, that'll kind of open up some shit. He goes, sometimes we go throw axe. Like, but this is because he was in the South. He's like, he's right. doing different things. He's like, he golfed too. You know, he's like, he's like, one time he went like on ATVs and shit. I was like, well, you're not really doing a lot of talking about business. He's like, he's like, no, I'm opening the, the person up uh, uh-huh. and getting them ready to enjoy, like the experience itself. Right. And then the you're 20, building a relationship. And then the 20 minutes that it takes to you to have, you know, talk business is business. He's like, but trying to talk business through, not, you know, 18 holes and, you it's know, forced. Bunch of months, it's forced. It's kind of forced. And then if I'm terrible and you're good, you're just looking like, I don't want to do business with this guy. He yeah. sucks. It's like, well, everyone fucking sucks. Like, yeah. Okay. I've got, like, so I have the ultimate story here. It's like, it, so I was working on Wall Street. I was, I was working at, I don't know, I, I think this is the, my my first seat so i'm relatively new i'm trying to build i'm trying to basically build this technology um, that that these hedge funds would want okay okay the b- biggest fucking hedge funds right in 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 new york and so there's this infamous guy i have to be careful guy i can't name names there's this infamous trader that's a client of the banks but he won't trade with our desk he won't spend any money with us basically he was just put into a category of He's never going to spend money. Yeah, he has a line into us. Don't chase the dog. Don't chase this. And I'm like, I kind of want to chase this. I like this. this. Right, I like this a lot. Dog with no tail. Yeah, I was like, ah man, this. I feel like I'm going to make. I feel like this is going to be like the guy that trades billions of dollars with me. Right. So, I go. You were going to be be as Bud Fox. I was going to be the Bud Fox, and this everyone's like, dude, they're like laughing at me as I was like setting up this meeting. So I, I say, hey man, what what do you what do you like to do? And he was like, uh, I like to, uh, no, 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 I don't like to do, you know, it's nothing. I, I said, do you like to eat? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I like to eat. I said, what do you like to eat? He's like, I like, I like, I really like sushi. I go, dude, sushi is my favorite food. I could eat sushi all day long. I was like, in fact, I'm going to out eat you in sushi. So let's go get sushi. He's like, done. I go, where, what's your favorite place? It's in fucking Greenwich, Connecticut. I get on the train. I go to <laughs> Connecticut. This guy picks me up in a stick four door five series from like the eighties. I I was like, like what is happening? Right. Get to the sushi sushi. spot, get to the sushi spot. He goes, what do you want to drink? I said, what do you want to drink? He goes, I don't drink. I go, well, neither do I. Uh, The iced tea comes sipping the iced tea. It, Cause it's not about me. It's not about. It's you. not about me. It's not about you at all. What, fuck what I I'm want to, to drink. I'm trying to learn about you. Right. So I get the whole inside story, which I would wish I could share with you guys about this huge blow up. One of the most legendary. I'm getting it directly from the trader. Okay. Yeah. We're eating a sushi boat the size of fucking half this room long. We finish it. This guy That's can insane. eat more than anybody I've ever. It, it basically. Him and I were a good match for taking down the sushi boat, yeah. right? And at the end of the fucking thing, 
I go, hey, the team thinks that you've been such a small account. Is there a problem with our technology, with your coverage? I'm going to be your new coverage. He goes, um, you can accept more trades for me, the bigger size? I said, yeah. He goes, oh, well, times everything by 100. And then I just... You, slowly you, said you know was, you, yes i will so you, it, and then he it, proceeded to tr he proceeded to be one of the biggest clients at the fucking bank bro you crushed it you snapped what you did was you you, you played uh you played into slightly like his ego while also asking the right probing questions you opened up the door far enough where you could ask the question that you needed to ask and then play into his ego so there's this thing that like not in a manipulative way, by the way, because no, no, back no, no. then I was a kid and I was dumb. I, I'm not. Hey, I'm still not smart enough to manipulate you were, people. You were you were a true bud fox. You were just. But yeah. you know what it was like. It's not. I remember Adam mentor He told me like he's like, bro, you gotta sell fear. And I was like, <laughs> people, what the what, what the fuck does that? I mean? was like, bro, I'm selling furniture. I'm selling you know real estate. He's like, it's not what you think. It's the fear of missing okay. out. Right. FOMO. Right. So it's like if you don't get this fucking deal right now. Fucking, you know, price not gonna be today. You know, it's eight dollars square foot. Tomorrow might be two hundred. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm busy. I'm, My phone's ringing. I got another guy who's asking about the same shit you're asking about. Right. And what you do is you you create this sense of urgency. Right. And you create this this fear, and people make decisions. And what you did was you played into the ego a little bit of him knowing he could do anything he wants, but he does nothing. Right. And the moment that you're like, you know the uh, you know the the, the team feels <laughs> like. You're a smaller count, but what you're doing is you're telling him, I think there could be more there. Right. He's like, yeah, there's definitely some more. I'm glad that you're seeing that. Right. But then you're like, is there something wrong with us? Right. And you're, he's like, no, no, no. I mean. Right. You're you pretty take, fun. We just can, killed the sushi yeah, boat yeah, together. Like, yeah. Like, can, can you take, like, can, what, can you accept what's more? your capacity? Right. And then he gives you the number. Right. And boom. But yeah. That's what that's, that's like, so that's like an elite level of connecting with people. Everyone doesn't know how to do that. It's like, right. it's a thing. And I've learned how to do that over the years of business and, and, and being around people. But those are like what you go the distance for. That, right. You went the distance. You made a fucking thousand sushi rolls. I did. How do you not have that showing on you right now? Dude, like, because that was years ago. And let me tell you, my man, I I've eaten a thousand. Rolls, that should be showing to this day. I've eaten a, a thousand <laughs> nigiri since. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But like, you were like, I got to go to Greenwich, Connecticut. I, I gotta, gotta get into I a got, stick five I, I series. Get, I got. I mean, I don't know. That's 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 a, that's a move right Dude, there. Dude, that car was it was the sickest fucking car he could have possibly. If he picked me up in a Goldwing, I would have been like, whatever. If he picked me up in a fucking Aventador, I'd be like, whatever. And that stick yeah. was like, it was like, Dude, it, it was him showing you like, I, I got this. Yeah, I got this. I got. And this. he's like, I literally have lost more money than the richest people in the world have made. Now I got a question for you. Who paid for the bill? Me. You pay for the bill. You really went the distance. How much was the fucking Me. bill? Me. Well, the, you know, we. it was a bank. It was, you know, the bank paid the bill. Okay. He And he tried to pay the bill. Okay. Be, you, you know what you got to do in those cases to further pay? You got to let him pay. Because uh, then he feels, I don't. Cause, you know, it's funny. I don't remember. It's like he did it. Dude, to be, honest, to be honest with you, I don't remember. I don't remember if we like she made me split it or something insane like that. Like yeah. <laughs> something might have happened. I, I don't remember exactly that. It was like you ate a couple and I ate a couple and you know, split it. Yeah, I think I don't know, but it was funny because I was like, that was the cheapest meeting I've ever had. We ate everything in the menu, but there wasn't a single drop of alcohol, so the bill well, the bill is always was cheaper. completely reasonable. Nice. No, I had the I had clients where we. I guess it's been years, so I could I could say that. Like, you know, you have clients where you, you can very easily spend a few thousand dollars on just fucking wine, yeah. you know? And then, not to mention, you're basically writing yourself a death certificate for the next day when you're drinking natural wines, oh, like yeah. it's going out of style. And you're just along for the ride. Yeah, you just got to assess, like, you know, like, is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> In this case, definitely not. You know, like Go to Greenwich, eat the sushi boat, Get in the stick five series and fucking trade a billion dollars Yo, of bonds. And, and and develop those relationships that can open doors beyond your world, your wildest dreams, man. Like, you know, I think that's that's one of the things I just learned in my life is like, yo, bro, like you never know where your opportunity is going to come from. You just don't know. You might have like an inkling or an idea or you might go, OK, this is great or this person is great. 
but that doesn't mean that person's gonna be in your life forever. Right. You naturally just think, oh, this person's great, so they're gonna be with me. No, nah, they might be with you for a season, not for every, for not for long. Mm -hmm. You might be in this position or this seat for a season, but not for long. So there's gotta be this level of like being able to accept things as they come in, and also accept when those things leave. A lot of people aren't really good at cycling that, mm -hmm. so things get challenging. But you know, when you kind of figure some of those things out individually, you start to learn like how you can keep turning gears and keep the shit going. Yeah, you know, you can't get caught up on spilled milk, man. You can't, you know. You've built this. You've built this thing. What What happens now? Do you feel the need to make it bigger? Do you feel the need? Like what 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 happens? Yeah. What happens? I mean, so 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 now, what happens a lot is. I mean, a lot of cool people that are, you know, not celebrities and not athletes. They're just like, yo, bro, you're fucking fly. I want to like, I'm kind of a stylist. I'm kind of like learning how to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's super cool because it's kind of like to my purpose in life is to kind of like help educate people on, you know, alternative ways to, 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 to really, you know, dive into your passions. So I'm a believer that like, look, as great as corporate is and it's taught me so much, it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Same with college, not for everyone. Like it wasn't you know, for me. It wasn't. I mean, it worked out in this way for me. But like you know, it just it wasn't something that like I really wanted to do. But mm -hmm. what it did teach me was how important it was to network. You have there's like no other time in your life that you have thousands of people that are your age, same age, right. interest, You're surrounded by surrounded it. by them. I mean, look, note to all young viewers: if you want to make a business and you want to be successful, do it while you're in college, mm -hmm. because. And, and make your price points make sense for, you know, your demographic, but you'll never get that again. Yeah. Because the one thing you guys all have is the commodity of you being in the same In school. the same thing. Yeah, I can't once, go. Once I we can't, all go off in the world, we're it's fucked. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know you at all. He's married. He got a house. He got yeah. kids. He got two dogs. I can't like, knock on people's doors in my building and go. That's called soliciting. Yeah, you can't do that's that. Called, that's called trespassing, I yeah. believe. They'd just be like, uh, I don't. Please go to your floor and yeah. fuck off. Yeah, you <laughs> can't. Like, you can't. Do I don't that. want your Girl Scout cookies. But when you, but when you're in college, like, it's a, it's a perfect opportunity to do that type right. of shit. So it just, you know, for me, like now, I'm I'm working with a lot of young people, and they, you know, I'm building out this stylist program where. I've got friends that are really good, close, uh, that are really cl like close with a lot of guys in the uh, in the MLS world, um, in the overseas soccer stuff. I got guys that you know I kind of handle a lot of the, the NBA stuff. Um, some guys are in the entertainment. Some are that are doing like I got these two girls that are doing stuff in the NFL world. Okay. So figuring out who those points of contacts are going to be, and you know building a larger platform for all of us to sit okay. and service more guys. I mean, okay. you figure each industry or each of the I mean each of these like you know sporting teams have thirty something teams. Okay. Thousands so of building and basically saying, okay, number one, I'm going to start with education. So giving back, but in the process of giving back, I'm probably going to end up meeting some great people out there. Yeah, because like, you know, I, I've learned it's like, you know, sometimes, you know, with, with some of these guys, like respectfully, like I said, I don't have an ego. Like I know what I'm great at and these guys may be faster, stronger, more money, whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, there's an intimidation when, you know, buddy come around and you got that shit on and you don't have it on. So it's like, right. you, but like they would they wouldn't mind hearing what I'm telling you now from a pretty face with a smile. Right. So sometimes these girls, they gotta kind just changing who's selling the product. Yeah, yeah, same same message, same everything, just different face. Right. Um, you know, I mean, I don't want to stand in your closet. You know, you, you start to kind of figure out how to open up the the you know the 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 platform for other individuals to come in and work and learn, learn and, and help also, out. And then help out. I love it. Don I think that's the pod, man. Dude, man. You're I mean, the man. Thanks yeah. for coming on. Of course, brother. See Anytime. you next time. Shout out. All right. Let's do it. It's pod, guys.